great. Live on Facebook, I do believe. Let me just check. Okay. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for joining Bibi and I this evening. It's an absolute honor to welcome Bibi to Inner Happy. We are going to talk about change. Change is something that none of us can avoid. But how we view and respond to change is what makes the difference. This evening, as I said, I am joined by an Irish icon. Yeah. A lady who I remember from the days of the BB show from Irish TV. This lady called BB Baskin absolutely exudes both elegance and charm, both on screen and off. It's her vivid and varied career that has seen so many changes that she has embraced so positively that we will chat about this evening. Bibi was the first lady in Ireland to host her own TV show. If that isn't a trailblazer, I don't know what it is. It's her calm voice that is so well known in our Irish homes, both from TV and radio. She's a TEDx speaker, author, podcaster, hotelier, and wellness advocate. And this is what caught my eye with Bibi when I could resonate so well with her. It's her positive approach and her passion for life that is evident. Her innate ability to connect with and inspire others is undeniable, as is her bubbly personality. It is evident to me that this lady, Bibi Baskin, has found her inner happy something that eludes so many people. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Bibi to Inner Happy as we chat about her journey, about having the courage to embrace so much change in her life with such great positivity. And I'm sure she will inspire many of us to possibly look differently and maybe more positively at change. So Bibi, it's over to you, and I am so happy to have you here, and you're very welcome. Well, you're absolutely spoiling me already, Sue. I don't know how <laughs> I can live up to even a small fraction of that, but thank you for the invitation. And, and always lovely to be in with a chance that if you can give even one person a little nudge towards making a change in their lives that will make them that little bit happier, and some people do need it, well, then this will be an evening very well spent just the one that'll do yeah exactly exactly so tell us bb where you you were born in donegal and you, you, you how did you get into first of all where you started off as a teacher yeah i did but i found something that was to really continue uh, during that era i found out something about me that was going to continue forevermore which is that i'm not very tolerant of repetition i love right. Change. I love learning new things. Now, as our little stories this evening will reveal, some of those changes were mighty big ones as well. But of course, within teaching, there's a lot of repetition. You're, you have a whole bunch of new faces next year, but they're going to have the same weaknesses and, and shine in the same way. And I was very young at the time, I don't know, maybe late 20s. Uh, and I thought, crikey, I'm going to be working for another 40 years. I can't keep on repeating this. So I quit. And that actual pattern, it was, it just has followed me all my life. Many other jobs, many other careers, even different continents and quitting when that kind of over familiarity sets in and consequent to that, a measure of boredom actually. Yeah, but it, it takes a lot of courage to to make that change um so for some people it's that you know that that boredom like you said is enough to ignite a passion for something new did you ever have fear of the unknown when you made because you've made so many changes 
I think invariably you're going to have fear, you know, and that horrible thing called fear normally comes and, and tries to put its invisible claws around yeah. your neck at four yeah. o'clock in the morning on a Monday <laughs> morning. You know what the hell it is about this demonic hour of four o'clock. But if we're troubled, as sure as hell, that's when we waken up and our minds become this monkey mind. I would have had a bit of that now and again, but no, not really at all, not very much. And I think it's very important for anybody who feels that fear to take a good look at it and ask yourself, what is it that you're afraid of? And I found that in many cases, the biggest thing of all that people are afraid of if they bring change into their lives is that they will be ashamed if it doesn't work out. And what an awful pity that is, that people would stop their own personal growth, that they would put an end and a sudden stop again, maybe, to the development of their own happiness because they're afraid of what other people might say about them. Well, you know, Sue, I always say to people when it comes to this point, uh, most people out there really don't give a damn about you because they're too busy giving a damn about themselves. And when it comes to your good friends and your loved ones, they will be always there to support you. So who actually is going to be bothering with you and why would it be worth it? You have to park that one at least if you're going to go and make a change. So challenge those thoughts for anybody who has Dig deeper. What actually are you afraid of? Um, if you do, if you are considering or do want to make that change, um, you know, and I suppose a lot of people think too, if they start, there used to be the good old pensionable job. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and a lot of people would stay then for those reasons and for a lifetime think, well, this is what I know. This is what I've studied. This is what I'm good at. But I guess to think at the end of your life, would you, to have the excitement of new experiences, and that's where the growth happens, stepping outside your comfort zone. I know I have moved and changed jobs also a few times, and I've reinvented myself. And the more I have found, the more that I do that, the more I find out about myself, the more I grow, the more I become this person that is is being renewed on a daily basis and it's so exciting and i guess that's what you also um discovered about yourself and i know your journey with um with the healing um the indian modality of ayurveda i'd love to hear more about that and maybe when you you started to hear about that maybe when a lot of people didn't know about that here and, that's not true. Yeah. and that was was that like an underlying calling for you even through your years in tv presenting and radio or yeah. was that just something that came your way it was something that came my way in the late 80s i mean that long ago here yeah. in ireland in dublin i had a huge interest in all sorts of what was what was then called alternative medicine and I met a doctor who could tell me about all sorts of wonderful things like acupuncture. And currently I, I go for acupuncture once a week because I want to keep my immune system built up in case of that COVID sod coming around my doors. Yeah. Uh, so I learned about acupuncture, about Reiki, about reflexology and about Ayurveda. And that was the one that I was particularly taken with. And that's because I've always been fascinated by human behavior and Ayurveda has wonderful information on the human mind, on why we feel the way we feel, uh, the three different types of us that exist in the whole world, in every culture and every race, only three types, Ayurvedic types, and they are mind-body types. And you can easily Google uh, um, an Ayurvedic quiz and find out about yourself. Which type are you? And that will explain a lot of your behavior. Now, there's a medical side to it as well, but I'm much more interested in the hard facts of the human mind, which can be very hard to ascertain reliably. But for me, that does it. And so, yeah, I, I learned about that from an Irish GP uh, in the late 80s in Dublin. It never permeated my work on television or radio because 
I mean, probably most people watching you this evening, Sue, are like you. They might not even have been born in the 1980s, but I can assure you that Ireland wasn't ready for that then. I don't think so at all. So I just kept it up as a private study, right. but it was the reason why I made two other major decisions later on. Yeah. So when you, wait, did you go from television in Ireland to, is that when you made the call to say you need something new and you decided to move to India? No, there was a little stop gap in between. And okay. actually that's probably not a bad idea. If you want a gentle landing, you know, and sometimes we all have to consider how much of this newness and this disruption can we handle mentally mm -hmm. in particular? Mm -hmm. So the, the gentle landing was a, a phase in between. I left Ireland and, and the wonderful job, and I always feel I have to say, RTE were wonderful employers. I have no grudge of any sort at all with them. But I knew when I was, what age was I then? Early forties. And I just knew that there was a, a great big wide world out there. Mm. And I wanted to get a little bit more of it and investigate it a bit more. And that's why I quit because I had calculated that even then I'd still be working for another 20 years. Yeah. And I yeah. thought I can't do the same thing for 20 years. So I, I sold the house and sold the car. You always must do that because you have to free yourself up. And again, I would say to, to anybody watching, if you want to bring serious change into your life, if you wait until you tick all the boxes, the right school for the kids, pay off the mortgage, get the job in the new destination, mate, you'll never go, you'll never go. Yeah. So I freed myself up from uh, the, the, jo uh, the job, essentially, uh, at the car and the house, the mortgage and the bank loan, uh, and I went to London because I thought it would be hugely exciting, and it was. And I got uh, work in television and also in all the BBC radios. The thing that I didn't fathom at the time was that really I had just changed the geography. I'd moved from Ireland mm -hmm. to England, but I was still very much in a Western culture, English yeah. speaking and broadcasting. And after, I think it was four years, I thought, no, no, this, this is not it. There has to be <laughs> more. And off I went again. And again, the, the same formula worked for me. Uh, sell the car, sell the house, get rid of the big debts, you know, because yeah. is there anything worse than a big monetary debt on your shoulders? Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. So you, you had a formula then that works, like you, you know what to do. It's like when I've moved a few times, it's not as big a deal because you like anything when you've practiced it you know what to do you, it's x y z and you go through the the motions and yeah it makes it easier um, it does but uh, i i don't think i want to do it again but then having said that if you would ask me when i worked in rte would i have gone off to a developing country and set up mm. Uh, a, a hotel I would have said well listen here mate you have lost your marbles I really would have but yeah. of course I would have been wrong so we never know having said that but yeah uh, that was uh, after about four years that I left England and I chose India and this is where Ayurveda starts to come in again I was only going on a holiday I booked a holiday in India for three weeks and okay. I chose the place in India where Ayurveda started 5,000 years ago, the state of Kerala down south. And so I went for a holiday uh, and then I thought, it's very nice here. People are so welcoming to me. Could I make a living here? Could I make a life here? And um, I also realized I didn't really have anything much to come back to. You know, I wasn't in a relationship. So I was very free in many ways. Mm -hmm. And then uh, gradually, because the story is so long, um, I stayed uh, after the three week holiday, I rented a house for six months. Then the six months became a year and so on and so forth. In stages, in stages. Yeah. Yeah. The little landing of separation in between. So it's, yeah, it's, and again, that's a very good point is taking things in little steps. 
Yeah. It doesn't have to be one giant leap all at once, but for somebody maybe wanting to make a change if they feel stuck, to make you, maybe making out a game plan of the steps of where they want to be and the little steps they can do to get there. And that's also very inspiring and less daunting than going from A to Z. I think, you know, Sue, it's like that with any, any problem or task yeah. in life. Yeah. And you know those days where we all can get overwhelmed and we think, oh, my God. I mean, I'm struggling with a deadline at the moment a bit. And people do struggle with deadlines. Mm. And you think, will I ever get through it? And it can really, really flatten you. And, yeah. and I think what you said there is exactly the right solution. You chip at it a little bit now and a little bit yeah. again. And you'll get that. But there's one other factor as well. Um, I, I didn't ever belong to the huge salaried presenters of RTE. I belong to what I call a much more modest time. But if you're going to make the sort of changes in the manner that I did, you can't expect to be leading a highfalutin, expensive life. Now, when I went to London, uh, I, I didn't rent a fancy apartment or flat and all of that. I stayed with um, a friend of my sister's. I took a room in her house, like a lodger, and I was very careful about how I spent the few quid because I didn't have it. I had no income for a year when I went there. And I think that's very important because otherwise you're going to end up with even more pressure. It's bad enough if you have a bad day and you wake it up and you think, oh my God, I haven't got a job. I have no income. But what if somebody's screeching at you then about the money you owe? So cut the cloth yes. to suit. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit of a sacrifice, but you know, you, you normally have to sacrifice to gain something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and and yeah prioritize what's what's most important to you you know my dad always said i could live on beans and toast when i move <laughs> to, to cut back it's about prioritizing what's most important to you you know yeah. and you will do it if you want it enough um, oh yes yeah yeah so it's not all um as people see you know it's not all a fairy tale and it's not all easy and there are many challenges however it's worth it if it's something that you want um you know and so so you you went to india and yeah. was it what was it that made you so you went on a holiday yeah. but you had sold everything which is in itself a huge leap um a leap of faith so you're going on holiday but you had a one-way ticket or you didn't yeah. know no, I thought I was coming back to London. Right. Uh, at least consciously, I thought I was coming back to London. And yeah. then I would start a job hunt. And I thought that the holiday would, you know, the old saying, a holiday clears your head. Well, I thought a holiday might clear my head. Yeah. So again, if you practice the whole notion of living in the present moment, there's not much point in going on a holiday with Ayurvedic massage and treatments. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and bringing with you all your worries about did I do the right thing there in the past when I gave up the job or yeah. oh my god what am I going to do in the future how on earth would that work so thankfully living in the present moment stood by me very well I loved what I saw and I uh, took it step by step again you know I thought I would write a book. I thought that would be my source of income because I suppose a lot of media people, when they yeah. quit media, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wrong in that. But you know what? It probably pacified me at the time. Yeah. And it's therapeutic, yeah. um, you know. And so with Ayurveda, is, is, I, I don't know all the details about it. I must explore. I know some, but again, I know from you, you are also um, very much um, an advocate for mindfulness and living in the present moment. Yeah. And I find personally, having lived that way um, consciously more and more so that it becomes a way of being for the last 14 years, a lot of the stress, worry, anxiety and fear, they just melt away. They're simply not there anymore which is an incredible way to live. And I know for you, and you have little gorgeous little videos that you post on Instagram and Facebook for anybody who wants to, to see. And I love that because they're short. 
yeah. not just because not just because they're short, I'm but because you. they're highly accessible. <laughs> and yet, there's, and yet, there's a message of being in the moment and recognizing and noticing what's around you. And that's all people really have time for often these days. And it's very accessible. It gives them a message and it's a reminder. So do you find living that way and having practiced that has also given you, as I, as I say, inner happy and inner peace? And that a lot of that stress, fear and worry, even though it doesn't seem like you've had a lot of maybe the fear of the unknown, but do you find that way of living is, has been highly supportive to you? Oh, massively so. And I, I just wouldn't change it for anything in the whole wide world. You know, life will always throw us all some curve balls. And in India, I, who have never been a businesswoman, I started a business. You know, I did it, my first startup ever and my only startup ever. So I had an awful lot to learn. And of course, I goofed right, left and center, I goofed. Uh, so there would have been moments, of course, where you would be worried. Um, mm. and, uh, but it's all about how you handle the curveball. That is really yeah. what dictates the degree of inner peace, as you call yes. it, so beautifully, yeah. uh, that you're going to have. And the tools that I find so useful are precisely the ones you mentioned. Let's take, for example, worrying about whatever it was in the hotel business that I had to learn. Um, when I give some talks here, and now only on Zoom, of course, about uh, tips for better sleep, natural tips for, for better mm -hmm. sleep, one of the things I, I recommend is that we should all at night, before we go to bed, about an hour beforehand, we should just get a cheap old exercise book, nothing fancy, and write down the date, the day, the time, the nature of the problem, the name of the person who can fix it, let's say it's a bank loan, you're in debt, the name of the bank manager, and now the most important column of all, at what time can that bank manager fix the problem? What's the earliest time? And the earliest time is probably going to be tomorrow morning at 9.30. So what you do then is you take your copy book, if it's this, there's your problems, we'll say written out, close it, Leave it in the kitchen, enjoy your evening and have a better night's sleep and keep that problem out of your head yeah. until 9.30 the next morning. Yeah, oh, so it's out of your head, it's on the paper and there's an action plan. There's there something is. in place, you get up in the morning and then you deal with it. And keep that exercise book away from your bedroom. You know, there's yeah. far too much old clutter in people's bedrooms. And I read somewhere recently, your bed is only supposed to be for two things. One is sleep. I'm not, we won't mention the other, we don't need to. Uh, but you know, people bring phones to bed, they bring tablets to bed, they have a television, a massive yoke like you'd see in the mm -hmm. cinema at the mm -hmm. foot of their bed, and they expect to get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Not possible. Not so possible. It's, it's creating these more helpful habits. Yeah. It is, habits. it is, it Healthy is. Healthy habits. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, no, that's a really good tip. And if, I know, as I said, you also practice. So if, if a person's mind, they say, okay, they're doing that, but what if their mind keeps wandering? And yeah. as we know, a, a good night's sleep is everything yeah. for being able to cope and stay on top of challenges, which we all have and always will have. That's the way of the world. We'll yeah. always have struggles, challenges. So if they say, look, well, my mind keeps wandering. I've written it down. Mm -hmm. What, 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 um, what tips would you have there, Bibi? There's just one thing they need to do. Now, it does take practice. Yes, because yeah. all of these things that we're talking about, you, you just can't read about them or, or listen to me or you talking about them and yeah. think, okay, I'll do that. And then bingo, you know, we're off to the races. No, not at all. It takes regular practice. I have a piano here beside me. It's like that. You need to practice a little bit every day. The yeah. same as techniques yeah. and tips. And, and I think it's vital that people do that in case they would think that we're telling them, you know, a heap of nonsense, like new age nonsense or something. Uh, so for the sleep, yeah, I, I think the different things that we have to do are particularly keep the gadgets out of your room. Uh, then the, ex the plain little simple exercise book with your, you can call it my problem book, you know, yeah. the problem, 
stay in there. And if you if you find the monkey mind coming in, you know, that, that you mentioned there, and, and Buddha, when he talked about it, said, uh, was it monkey mind, like a bunch of drunken monkeys, you know, yeah. hollering and bellowing and jumping from yeah. tree to tree. Uh, and that's the way our mind goes. Most people, yeah. the trick, the final solution for that is your breath. Focus on your breathing. You know, the very basic thing in meditation is that, as you know, but that is what stops the monkey mind. So, for example, if I take a breath in, and I won't hold it now, but take a nice long breath in and hold for maybe one or two, and then... and so on, so on, so forth. Mm -hmm. When you're doing that, you will be doing it much slower than I do it there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I didn't want to bore everybody. But you bring your mind to your breath. And I find it useful, and not, not all systems advise this, but you might have heard me making a sound there with the breath when I was exhaling. I find that the, the more of the senses we can use mm -hmm. if we want to calm our minds, the better. So listen to your breath. Make a sound like... Mm. And if somebody's in the room with you and they think you're a lunatic, tell them to bugger off. Out well, of the that's room. their problem. <laughs> it really is tremendous. But again, there's no point in doing, you know, a couple of breaths now and then thinking that's it solved. Look, yeah, for yeah. God's sake, Sue, so three minutes every day, three minutes of breathing, and that will make a hell of a difference. Yeah. 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 Mm. It's like I say, I, I, I find that people often overlook the simple, it's simple, and it's quick and easy if you practice. And Correct. I think people often overlook the simple, quick and easy because we're, we're, we've been programmed to think that things need to be more difficult. Sure. I need to pay hard money and work hard for the thing, certain thing, things to work in my life and for my life to become easier. But it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And But as you said, with these practices, one needs to take responsibility and be proactive at integrating that into your day. Otherwise, it's, you know, it, it's, your, it's your responsibility. And I love what you said about the breath because I, the breath is always there. It's always with you. So you can use that anywhere and any time. Thank God it's always powerful. with us so yeah. far. Uh, <laughs> so far well let's hope it stays there i'm going to invite bb as we're live on facebook if anybody and thank you everybody for joining in we're delighted you're here this evening um if anybody has any questions please do um pass them our way and bb and i would be delighted um to share with you we have here bb great advice love listening to you and love the idea of the problem book I think a lot of people will be getting a problem book for Christmas. <laughs> and that would be amazing. And, yeah. Uh, let's see. Bibi Esther Ruby says, nice to see you. Hello, and, Esther. Yeah. And um, Bibi, tell me also a, a little bit about now that you're back in Ireland. I believe you're back here now. Did you? So first of all, in India, Let's first of all, sorry, I'll take a step back there. What made you decide to change again to come back? Because I was 15 years in South Africa and I know then by then somewhere is it's your home. Mm -hmm. You know, you've made that home. You're like a local. Um, so what instigated you to change again after that period of time? I'm not sure that I felt like a local, actually, just on, on that one. Um, yeah. Where I lived, I can say this, but other people can't. I was the only white girl in town, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I never felt like a local. Uh, but I felt very welcomed and I yeah. was like royalty. And people were so kind and welcoming and also gentle. So I wouldn't say that um, I felt like a local. No, that would be yeah. so. But yeah. I know exactly why I left. <clears throat> um, you see, after 15 years there, the, the stuff that had intrigued me at the beginning, and there was a long list, there was all the cultural stuff. There was yeah. the language, and I love languages. Then there was the business culture as well. So many different things to learn. And I think I'm happiest when I'm learning. But after yeah. 15 years, mm. I knew quite a bit of that. 
In yeah. fact, I think I got to the point where I knew all I wanted to know. Yes, that was yeah. So the intrigue was no longer there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the familiarity had come in its place. The other thing is that I was getting a bit older and there is no doubt about it, but as you get older, uh, for most of us anyway, uh, bodily energies are not what they used to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was 50 when I went off and did a set up a business in India. Now, I'm always distraught when I, when I meet people and, and their 50th birthday is approaching and they're saying, oh my God, I'm over the hill. And I say, stop it right now. I went to India on my own as a woman in a developing country when I was 50. So you can Again, do- Again, it's the mindset, isn't it? Mm. You know. And what you did there is you set up a, a hotel and I've seen the slides. Um, <laughs> if people are interested in, in your refurbishment of this magnificent building, it was breathtaking to see the work you yeah, did. You. And it's now, a, it's a heritage hotel, of India. hotel yeah. in India. And yeah. I, I also read on your website there that you do, when I suppose when you can, tours back to anymore. no not anymore not, i did a couple but yes. uh, not anymore and i'm finished with that i found yeah. you know this is one thing just skipping ahead that yeah. lockdown has revealed for me uh, that i love being at home right yeah home I, in ireland or home in the house okay <laughs> <laughs> I yeah don't want to go to airports again sue and i oh, don't want yeah. to stay in hotels again you know yeah. i just yeah. I lived for at least 10 years in a hotel. Yeah. And everybody yeah. might think, oh my God, the lucky dog and all the rest of it. Mm. It's hell almost because you're thinking, oh my God, the staff didn't do that. Why did he not do that? And all the rest of it. It's not as yeah. nice as it yeah. sounds. But I feel no need to travel on tour ever again. Maybe that will change. But certainly for the yeah. moment, no, no more tours. I love it where I am now. So you're in Cork. And yeah. so. I know that you have your second gorgeous little book. I see you had it in your hand there. Can you tell us a little bit about it? I can. Uh, may I hold it up? Is that all right? Yes. It's called The Happy Book. And see, uh, you, you fit right in here on Inner Happy. Can you see? <laughs> That's That's wonderful. Well, it's a collection of quotes that I've created and collected about uh, how to be just that little bit happier uh, yeah. it's, not, it's not going to teach you to be ultimately happy every single day of your life i don't think that's possible uh, but there are things and here's one we were just talking about i opened it randomly yeah. slow down your breathing it will result in positive changes for both body and mind and here's another one on the page opposite smile more when we smile we cannot help but feel a lightness of being. And you know, Sue, when I came back after all those years away, that's one thing that I noticed about the Irish that had changed. They'd forgotten how to smile. Really? Yes. There were all these sour faces looking at me from cars. And even, I always describe it this way, in a supermarket when you stand back to let somebody through. Yeah. Oh, good sour faces. Much more so than before. Yeah. Really? Wow. That's interesting. Was yeah, nobody... because I grew up in Dublin. I left really when I was 21, came back when I was 46. So I, I guess I didn't live here as an adult. I came back feeling like a foreigner, really, because I hadn't been an adult here. So I and I don't recall. I do recall the changes I noticed was that it's now more global um yeah i don't recall i'm in the west of ireland and people tend to be i guess maybe less hurried less distracted more at ease in the country by the sea um so maybe they again maybe they're being more present they're less distracted so they they smile a little bit more or maybe well, it's just me grinning silly at them that makes them smile but i think busy busy people in the cities and that's where mindfulness would really help is to enable them to just come back into the moment and enjoy what's right now because that's all you actually have you know that's very true 
Yeah. So when you moved back, did you notice that? Was it more in the cities or in general? Well, I don't know specifically, to be honest. But yeah. when I came back, I was, I've never, I haven't lived in a city since I came back. So it would have been, I'm near Cork City. <clears throat> so and I, I used to travel to Dublin an awful lot before uh, COVID. So I don't know. I, I would say it's everywhere in my yeah. experience. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Interesting. You know, my voice is, is going a little bit. I'm terribly sorry. I, I've done quite a bit of uh, interviews about the little book um, this yeah. week. And I think now it's just about getting past it all. But can I tell you the story about how this happened? Please do. And how we can how we can get it. Is it in oh, the shops? You. you tell us everything. I will. I'm terribly sorry about this. I hope but, your voice doesn't go now till we're finished. <laughs> you. I'll thank you down some honey in the post. <laughs> what am I going to do? Um, so when I came back here, I joined social media. I had never been on social media before. And it was the best thing, probably the best thing I've done since I've come back, because it's brought me in touch with a whole different generation of people like yourself, of your age group, whom I would yeah. never have known. Yes. And it's brought me in touch with people who have an interest in the things and all the usual stuff, interesting yeah. things that I do too. So it's been yeah. quite marvelous. But one of the things I started to do maybe two years ago is that I started to uh, record on the phone a little 15 second or 20 second video in the garden in the mornings. First thing I do, and I think I'm not a routine creature at all, but I do think that early morning rituals are lovely. You yeah. should create a little bit of time for yourself in the early morning. Lovely thing to do. So. Uh, yeah, it does, it does make a difference. It yeah. does. So what I started to do winter or summer, it doesn't bother me, uh, is I'd go out to the garden first thing. And when dawn would break, I especially love the energy around the dawn. And I, I frequently get up at four and five in the morning. I, I don't have to, no, I don't have to. I just don't need a huge amount of sleep. And I go out and record a, a beautiful thing, maybe the sky breaking and birds yeah. flying over or something. Yeah. And then I use my voice to put a little wellness idea on top of that. Well, these yeah. things have gone down a bomb. They, I shouldn't say a bomb, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I've got so many compliments and such lovely feedback. They're on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and sometimes on and LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah. I've then, seen, yeah. I see I can find? Oh, yeah. Then a year ago, a friend of mine here in Cork, Michael Mulcahy, he's a publisher. And he said, look, not everybody's on social media. I'm a publisher. Why don't you let me publish uh, some of these little things in book form? And so this time last year, it was this one. Okay. which we call Bibi's Wellness Wisdom. And it also is a collection of tips and techniques about to enhance your wellness and yeah. all that sort of thing. Uh, <clears throat> that was last year. Then this year, of course, I should have said, perhaps prefaced it by saying, I've always been a massive collector of quotes. I create my own, I look at others and, and read an awful lot about them. And I have endless notebooks full of quotes. Mm -hmm. I just find them to be these wonderful prompts for life, prompts yeah. for how to live a life. Uh, like you said about my little videos, a, a quote is never too long. It's enough for you to master and bring mm -hmm. with you and then introduce in an active way into your life. Mm -hmm. So this year we continued, and this was the one you saw earlier, the happy book, volume two. I don't know how many more volumes are going to be. You cannot get it in your local bookshop, but you can get it if you contact me. And all you have to do is go to my website uh, and scroll down on the home page. It's about halfway down there. The website is bbbaskin.ie. And if you do that, you'll get all the details there of how to get hold of it. Yeah. Fantastic. That's well, it's, I think it seems like the perfect little Christmas gift. Um, and what again, what I love about that, like your little videos, is they are it's short, quick, yeah, but memorable and meaningful and insightful messages. And that's if we every day we get up and like I listen to the birds every morning singing outside. I have a bird house and I fill it with nuts. And again, to me, when I start my day with my cup of tea, 
listening to the birds, it just instantly sets me on the right footing for the rest of the day. And it's all about, like we said, creating those healthy habits of, and with intention, consciously choosing to do something that makes you happy. And yours are quick and easy. So I, I look forward to getting that book and yeah. I will definitely log on to your website. And before, um, before we let you go and have your nice cup of tea, for when hopefully in the coming months, when we are able to ease on restrictions and meet together, do you have plans for 2021? Because I know you don't like to, <laughs> to plan too far ahead. I learned that. You live more in the moment. Are you just going to go with the flow and see what comes your way? Or do you have some plans for next year? Uh, coincidentally, if such a thing exists as a coincidence, which of course I don't believe it does. I believe these signs that we get along the path of our lives are all synchro destiny at work in our lives. But that's a story for another day. Yeah. Uh, the so-called coincidence is that I have only one plan <clears throat> to make a little trip, and that's to go away. Yes, to go away, because my last trip away, uh, it was uh, I was working at an event, was in GMIT in Galway on March 9th, uh, and I hadn't been to Galway for decades, and I loved the electricity of the energy in the city centre. It yeah. was captivating for me. So I've also met, uh, through social media, I I've also met a number of very fine people who live in Galway mm -hmm. and around that area, and I'd love to go and meet them in person. I hope oh, I can meet with you. Lovely. Yeah, well, I'm just outside going. In fact, I was in the city this evening to collect my daughter and the lights, it's not as busy as it would generally be at this time of year. And just to see the lights and the city does have an absolute special magic. Yes. Um, like that, everybody asked, why am I moving back to Galway when I'm actually from Dublin and my whole family is there? Just something drew me to be here by the sea. Like I said to you earlier with the countryside, mm. there's a very special energy and feel to it. So yeah, all the best people are in Galway. <laughs> I'll be smacked for saying that. <laughs> and a few more. And I think we've timed this very well because I think this bio is about to leave me. <clears throat> no, you, you must, we, we need to let you go now. <laughs> before I get in trouble and I would like to thank you and to thank everybody on Facebook who has tuned in and they know where to find Bibi um, on her website and I will um, put Bibi's website link anyway in the video link and it's been an absolute pleasure Bibi to meet you virtually again and I'm hopefully we'll see you in Galway for sure. See you in Galway. And thank you very much indeed. It's been thank a pleasure. You. Thank you too. Bye, Bye. everybody.